My shins were grown a full tassel. The would-be peak of fashion for nudist flappers in the 20s. Oh, but I was selling out to wear a pair of wedges for a friend's wedding. I lay back and thought affectionately of the patriarchy as a hot wax cloth tasted my skin and jerked back bristled like the tongue of a cat retracting. Waxing is akin to the backwards insertion of a thousand needles. It is not relaxing. But I was just beginning to get into it when it happened. A grand betrayal of clinician to client's trust founded on a framework of perfect small talk. The ten-stroke moment it took for her to sever the hair from my toes. Oh, see, growing up, I had barely learned to color between the lines before beginning to shade my body into traffic light regions. Green, meaning good to grow. And had I been a boy, I could literally paint myself as Oscar from Sesame Street, epitome of macho virality. But I am not. It had not occurred to me that a little texture to the toe was a source for shame. It had simply grown there, boldly riding my piggies to the market in jandals. Oh, God, I should have tried shaving, laser, creams and epilation, threading, plucking, fucking, electrolysis, sandpaper, cheese graters, killing it for fire! (laughs) The pursuit of beauty is like a band-aid, and sometimes it just makes sense to amputate everything and be free to roll around oozing femininity, finally perfecting a contour with the Freddy Krueger color palette telekinetically. (laughs) It's called hirsutism, to have hair in undesignated places. And according to WebMDB, it is solely a woman's disease, more pervasive than freckles, Genetic, harmless, and yet neglected as a remedy is a step-by-step for self-acceptance. Causes include testosterone sensitivity, a human hormone important for the pastime of breathing, pregnancy, ooh, generally considered a fairly feminine activity, menopause too, again, a thing less typical in men. It is a woman's disease of so-called masculinity, but to be a feminine female is not a given of biology. It is an oxymoron. And because to us compliance does not come naturally, we have a choice to embrace bikinis or to break the boundaries and to start the ball rolling, I'm going to share a secret. We all have a pinch of pepper on our pie holes. Just a few bean sprouts between our buns. Yes, all women have hair on their assholes. (laughs) Thank you. Hello, how are we going? (laughs) Um, Congratulations on the Hoi Ho for winning the Bird of the Year. (laughs) Who voted? Put up your hand if you voted. Great, it's about the same as the local body election turnout. (laughs) So um, when I heard that the theme of this event was hope, the first thing that sprung to mind was birds. Um, partially because my mental space is in Avery, I'm drawing all of the birds, but also because there is so much hope when it comes to bird conservations. We've had one of the best breeding seasons on record. For example, there are now more than, one, more than 400 takahe. That's incredible, <laughs> considering how far we've come. Um, and so I wrote this poem, and it's set in an Aotearoa where birds are so common, they have become a luxurious nuisance and it's called Bird World Problems. (laughs) In the old days, predator-free 2050 seemed like a real good time. And so for 30 years, we ran to check the rat traps every morning like children, receiving rather sadistic Christmas stockings. This land was a mass grave of feathers once, but we planted it with saplings, and the singing returned. Let's get more birds, they said. It will be fun, they said. Fast forward to 5 p.m. on a springtime Monday, 2051. I returned to my car only to discover the Kia have eaten it. (laughs) 
seven feathered hooligan sit above the scrap metal massacre, slurping up the seatbelts like Mitsubishi Fettuccini. Forced into a scenic bushwalk home, I am mugged by a flock of feral wicker. Well, you know how they are. Peck pockets for anything glittering. They strip me of my silver watch and remove my shoes at beak point. The sequin sneakers were a mistake. <laughs> In predator free New Zealand, the most practical color for walking is white, if you know what I mean. I mean bird poop. Sprinting under trees, I am pelted with kakariki soup falling thicker than buttercream icing. I am one reluctant cupcake. I escape at last into my apartment. The landline is ringing, but I dare not answer. Tricked by the tui too many times, I have telephone trust issues. I head straight for the shower forgetting to check for the penguin who often doze beneath the dripping spigot. A tiny hoi-ho awakens and is so overcome with maternal affection for my feet that she vomits her seafood casserole between my toes. I keep a strict nighttime routine. No blue light electronics past 7.30. But predator-free New Zealand has blessed me with a nocturnal stalker the blue-eyed laser kiwi, essentially the goodnight kiwi's equivalent of the Antichrist. He beams insomnia through the cracks in my curtains. Psst! Let us back, say the cats. We'll sit on your laps. Oh, give us at him, say the stoats. They can crash in our throats. The left side of my bed stretches out into Antarctica. Oh, but the Takahe snuggle in. And in the canopy, a kokeko composes the tune of the morning. Nah, I say. Nah, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> All righty, I have one more, also brand new. This one requires less introduction, but it does have an interactive element. So when the time comes, will you respond? Yes. I love it, love the enthusiasm. So it's called In Response to One Direction Song, You Don't Know You're Beautiful. <laughs> In Response to One Direction Song, You Don't Know You're Beautiful. Good evening, Harry, Zane, the other ones. A Tinder match once told me I was stunning, and then he took it back. <laughs> Apparently, it is considered PDA to respond to you are beautiful with yes. <laughs> Chill out, babe. You ain't all that. Stop snogging your kneecap on public transportation. It is making the children cry. Because it's like you're saying in the song, Harry, not knowing you are beautiful is the reason you are beautiful, is the reason we're instructed on the daily to love ourselves through the medium of soap commercials. But society is surprised when we actually do. When a person asks, how are you? The correct response is... When a person says, you look like a certified babe tonight, should you A, reveal the spiel of your insecurities, or B, a PowerPoint of self-indulgent selfies, love yourself quietly, and only in a self-care, pedicure, hug a puppy kind of way, like it's less a self-love, more a self-apathy, a please don't die kind of love, but also treat yourself to an extra existential crisis, modesties of virtue, so do yourself a favor and think about how sweaty and insignificant you are. <sighs> Harry, when you market your music at a preteen girl, be careful of the things you say. There is very little difference between having a hard-on for humility and a guy who's got the hots for low self-esteem. <laughs> the way we treat ourselves is contagious. Like, I never had a problem with my earlobes until I heard the way a friend referred to hers. And without permission to change that conversation, they will listen, they will talk, they will question their existence and the shape of their faces, they will listen. So how do I love me? Let me tell the ways. 
I love me with patience. I am attentive to my eyebrows as they meander like a small child telling a story across my forehead. I love me with inconsistency. I have commitment issues towards a single train of thought. I love me <laughs> sentimentally. This double-barreled nose is a personal joke that I share with my great-great-grandmother. I love me superficially. These eyes are so big a psychopath could sew an entire skin suit from a single lid alone. I love me with volume. Those who are hard of hearing have a natural affinity to me. I am louder than a vibrator in a nunnery. I love me, I love me, I love me, I love me, I love me. Thank you.